Hey friends, welcome to Jim Lanahan and Friends. Got a little erasure for pre-show. I was just saying that this reminds me so much of uh, living on Long Island and going to grad school. <laughs> Having deja vu. Uh, and I used to listen to erasure on my way to school. Uh, I was studying psychology, getting a master's degree. Those were the days. Somehow I was a full-time graduate student and still went out every night. How did that happen? I'd be flat on my butt now. Laura Lee, I'm gonna send you an invite. All right, that should be on its way to you, Laura Lee. So yeah. Oh, hi there. Oh, gosh, hi. How are you? I'm good. Like, I feel like I already know you, so we can, like, get over the intros, because, like, we're already besties, right? <laughs> not only... Do, Basically, not only... we're best friends. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's especially weird for me, because I've been, I have been literally seeing you every day for 30 years. You know what okay, I mean? Well, I mean, so... besides that, besides that, we have Maddie Kane in, in common, but I started, you know, you're a very, very busy guy. Like, I feel like after just today, so we have the KTLA weekend news in common, the whole Dana Devon thing, I was at home watching the exact same thing and thinking the same thing because I'm such a Seinfeld freak yeah. that the whole puffy shirt thing, she was so great about it. Yeah. And that I am, when you first announced that I was coming on, you were like, and I have post-its of questions. And I, you know how like when people say like, you know, if you're, yeah, if you're on a deserted <laughs> island, you know, what would you bring? And like after my husband and my kids and all that and wine, Back in the, like a few years back, I would say lip gloss, but now <laughs> in today's world, I would say I can't function without post-its. Yeah, I agree. I what agree. colors, what colors your face? Well, you know, right now I'm like, I'm all yellow and yeah. kind of a melon, but there was a time in my life I was working at General Electric, don't ask, it was a dark period. The General Hospital. Yeah, no, can you imagine? No, <laughs> power company, not the hospital. But I used to color code my post-its. So I had a color, a stack in each color, depending on the project. Yeah, I mean, post I mean, for life. So you've been at it for a long time. I mean, I've, I've loved them for a while, but now I need, like, it's like a drug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it, I love it. Yeah. So, um, and yeah, by the way, thank you to Maddie Kane, who Where's I've known since I was in my 20s. It's Aww. so funny. I mean, yeah. I Oh yeah, I was gonna say I probably have too, but I probably I probably haven't. He's <laughs> the best. Thirty five. Yeah, and we should best. say Matt does uh, PR for a Young and the Restless, but okay. also any, any other shows or just Y and R. We are more than enough for him. Like <laughs> we imagine having every actor on the show, like saying like, "What do I do if I'm thirsty?" <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. Matt will be like, "I'll tell you, just go grab a glass of water." <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. I love it. It's so good. Well, I want to officially welcome you to Jim Lanahan and Friends. Thank you. But by the way, we love a sound effect here, so get ready. Oh, my God. The crowd goes wild, Morley. Oh, my gosh. So Jim Lanahan and Friends is the same 10 questions. Everybody gets the same questions. There's no really? right answers, no wrong answers. And then we'll just kind of like kiki off of those. But you and I have a lot to talk about. So <laughs> I think we're going to kiki quite a bit. So oh, I like the kiki. Yeah. I might, have, I might have to borrow that. Oh, yeah. A kiki. You know, a kiki is when you get together with your girlfriends, maybe at a drunk brunch. It's okay. called kiki. You know, yeah. you just have a good time. Done. So, uh, the first question is the easiest question. Oh, no. Question number one. It sometimes turns out to be the hardest. You're, oh, no. Well, none is of it them like, are really your favorite hard. color? You're, the, well, what's your name? Where'd you grow up and where you live now? Pretty oh, easy. Oh, that's pretty good. My name is Laura. Well, so I was Laura Lee Kristen Bell, and now I'm Laura Lee Bell Martin. Um, I'm Martin. I'm Mrs. Martin to my kids friends and I'm still Belle in any work situation um you know or not I, I go I answer to Laura I answer to I answer to Cricket I answer to Christine I answer to mom I answer to even, so, uh, I grew up in Chicago and and then moved to LA when I was 17 to become a regular on the young and the restless and the rest is history amazing. And, then, amazing. And, like, and then like 30 years went by <laughs> Now, I, I'm going to um, look quickly at, at one of my 17 post-its. 
So your dad is William Bell. Your yep. dad wrote Days of Our Lives, Developed Another World, Ran Guiding Light, Ran As the World Turns, Created With Your Mom, Lee Bell, Y&R, and then Bold and the Beautiful. Holy crap. And right? he did a lot of that from, from what Chicago. I can tell the timeline, he was in Chicago. Yes. And I think like he sort of liked that because he, mm. he was able to focus. Um, but when he came out here and suddenly he was at the studio all the time, like he loved being, he loved having two TV monitors on and seeing Y&R and B&B tape at the same time and could yeah. call down and say, that's not what, that's not, you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, I mean, he brought Days of Our Lives from number, I think, four to number one. And that was his, like, as soon as that occurred, um, they came to him and said, you know, we think you have something pretty special. So help us out. And so he, so he said, um, okay, and he met with people at the Polo Lounge of the Beverly Hills Hotel. And they said, do you have a show? And he said, yes, I have a show. And he, they said, what is it? And he said, you know what, let's, why don't we meet tomorrow? Because he did not have a show. <laughs> so he and my mom, it would be like post-its, he and my mom sat there and had cocktail napkins. And he, with his red pen, wrote the, um, the Abbots and the, and the Forest, uh, not, oops, the, oh gosh, okay, wait. I might need Maddie Kane in my ear, uh, and not the Abbots, the um, Brooks and the Forest. Yeah. It's, it sounds wrong, but anyway. Um, so the Brooks fan. Oh, oh my God! So um, and that's and the next day they sold the show. It's incredible. It, it doesn't happen like that so easily yeah. anymore, <laughs> unless yeah. you know, unless you already have one in the in the bag. It's so incredible to me, and the fact that he was able to go back and forth and do it from Foster, Chicago Foster. for so long. Okay. How long have you been watching? Because. Uh, I started watching The Young and the Restless in 1987, okay. I was seventh grade. So Danny and were Danny and Cricket together? Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And I was uh, I was mad because at one point, tell me if I'm wrong, <laughs> but Danny and Cricket were together. Danny cheated on Cricket with Phyllis because Phyllis drugged Danny and convinced him that he was the father of her child, which was not true. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty serious stuff. Phyllis is the worst. I mean, by the way, Michelle <laughs> Stafford is so bold. Great. I could yeah. watch Michelle Stafford, like, read a phone book. She's, yeah. she's brilliant. Well, and imagine getting to watch her, like, right here, yelling <laughs> in your face. It's so great. I know. Yeah. Like, what do you do if Michelle Stafford is just screaming in your face? It took, you know, it, took, it took a while to kind of not be intimidated by that. And, and mm -hmm. even if, you know, even if we have days where well, like we, we love to stand off, I had to get stronger to like battle off with her because it's she's such a force, right. Um, but it's like now it's just fun. We just wish we could do it more. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's like, you know, you're, you're <laughs> depends on who has who hot who has higher heels that day because like whoever's a little bit right. taller is like yeah. Well, and also like just the way Christine is written, she's the she's nicer, right? Like she's the lawyer. We we <laughs> love and respect her. I know yeah. she's had her moments, but yeah. compared to a Phyllis who's crazy oh, yeah. pants, you right. know, so. so fun. Yeah, yeah. So I, you yes. get to tell her like tear her down. We're so, sitting here literally screaming in our living room, cheering for cricket. Like, we love it, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah, I need to run over her by, like, with a car. So do something a little bit more <laughs> drastic. But, but I'm happy to yell at her whenever I can. And we have the best time. We do. It's she's so awesome. good. It's so good. I'm glad she's back because she's, you know, for me, she's my favorite Phyllis. I love it. Question number two. Describe yourself in five words or less. Oh, no. Um, oh, well, I mean, completely opposite from what anyone thinks. Sarcastic. Um, um, oh, does it have to be like a sentence? No, no. Oh. Yeah. Oh, um, I mean, mo motherly, but sarcastic, goofball, um, uh, uh, workaholic, um, wine lover. I'm glad you said workaholic because in preparing for today, I did a mm -hmm. lot of reading about you. Mm -hmm. I had no idea how much you're producing on top of appearing in y &R as an actor. So you have an Emmy from producing a show called My... It's called my so it's called My Promise. And it my was, Promise, yeah. My kids were younger and I was so afraid of the whole teen texting and driving thing. And I wanted to make a six-part 
um, web series about it being a story that kids could watch quickly mm -hmm. um, and where they weren't being preached to, but it was like this like horrific yet romantic little love story that would make them never want to text and drive again. Mm -hmm. um, so we did that a bunch of years ago. Um, and yeah, we were so excited to win an Emmy. I just, you know, I, every single day, you know, as a parent, even in LA, you, you live in LA, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so when you look to your right or your left on, on the street, it's terrifying. People are just staring at their phone. And mm -hmm. so I want everyone, I wanted to, people just to watch it to like learn something from it. It's so funny because I used to fight my dad on like, you know, when I was growing up, Lily and Dusty on As the World Turns would be like in bed and making out and having so much fun. And I would be like preaching, it's okay to say no. <laughs> and I'd get so, I'd be like, kids want to see other you know whatever and then this message storyline would go and our ratings would be huge and you know i'd have to like you know not necessarily say good job dad but i had to just admit that i was wrong again because um if you have that platform you have to you have to do something so i just thought you know our kids uh, even if even if no one sees this i have to do this for myself and it it turned out to be a great a great scenario um but yeah I, i'm writing all the time i mean I have a writing partner who plays, who's Martha Byrne, who was on As the World Turns, Lily, who are like um, best friends and we're pushing a few series um, ideas forward. And, you know, we'll just see what happens. If I'm not doing one thing, I just finished uh, two Lifetime movies um, right before the quarantine. So I am a workaholic. I can't, my, can't, you know, I wish my, I'm sure my husband wishes I could shut my brain off, but I can't. I'm the same way. I yeah. totally get it. I get it. Yeah. And my worst fear about quarantine, because I'm working from home, was that I would feel idle because I immediately start to feel depressed, you know? Yeah. So I hear you. Um, work is actually very therapeutic for me. When do the movies come out on Lifetime? And do you know what they're called? So I do. So um, the, the VC Andrews, they did like Flowers in the Attic. Um, mm -hmm. So it's a five book series. I did Ruby. And, and so I play like a Phyllis character. You won't even recognize me. I wear red lipstick and I'm like Cruella de Vil. And um, so <laughs> it's, it's very different. Um, I think the, I, there's in the middle of shooting the second one when we got shut down. So I, I wrapped, but I have a feeling it will be closer to the end of the year. But don't worry, I will call and tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, please, please, because I, yeah, first of all, to see you, this is one of my favorite things about, like, when you watch somebody on TV for so long, to see you play something other than oh. Christine is such a treat, you so know? So we shot in Love Canada, it. and, um, you know, Weiner's big in Canada, and the man, John, who, who would drive me mostly, said, I know, like, I know it's you, I see it's you, but you don't, I don't look anything like me. So, so it was really fun. I mean, it's weird just how red lipstick can make me look completely different, but well, there's a whole transition that occurs. So it'll be- Oh my God, lipstick and lashes. Yeah. Change everything, right? Absolutely everything. everything. Um, so the next one, if money was no object, what would you do today? If you weren't on YNR, what would you be doing? Well, I mean, I, you know, I, would still work and still only give my kids a small amount of allowance. They're, they're like almost 19 and 20. Well, they're, they're old. And they're like, how come you give us so little? Um, but okay, let's talk about something extravagant. Like if we weren't in quarantine, I would love to go back to, to France or Italy or, or just, mm -hmm. you know, I would just love to travel right now because I feel like we've been told we can't. So yeah. 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 Is, are, are those your favorite places? Italy, France? Um, no, like usually tropical, like uh, Bahamas or Hawaii. Mm -hmm. We were supposed to go to the Bahamas for spring break. Um, so we didn't do that. So, so maybe we would just kind of fulfill that trip. I don't, it's been hard. I, I, yeah, I, I, mm -hmm. um, I, I'd also just like to honestly <laughs> give it, give it all to people who need it right now would probably, I'd prefer to stay home and just say there because, yeah. and all the, all the frontliners and I mean, just what's been going on is crazy. So um, I prefer to help others. Yeah, I hear you 100%. Um, question number five. I keep saying it's a toilet, is it a toilet flush? <laughs> no, it's the sound <laughs> from Law and Order. Dong, dong. Okay. <laughs> question yeah. number five. You're the third person to ask if it's a toilet flush. So, <laughs> the first time you know, it happened, I was my... like, I know you're on a couch. <laughs> <laughs> note to my producer, we need a new sound effect because, you know, that's crazy. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. Uh, the question is, past or present, who would be most surprised to learn that you had a crush on them? Oh, wow. Um, hmm. 
Well, I mean, I don't, I probably don't know that, like, you know, like Brad Pitt wouldn't know. <laughs> um, but do I have to know the person? So like, it's someone that I... It could be I, anybody. I mean, it's juicier if you know the person, but it could yeah, be anybody. It, it, hmm, crush on them. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll come back to that after a few toilet flushes. Let me think about it. <laughs> I love you for saying that. <laughs> um, let me tell you, I okay, so let's go through the gorgeous men that you have uh, dated on y and I, so, I guess I could say Shamar Moore. I mean, hello. Yeah. Built in yeah. auto crush, right? right? The most gorgeous. Yeah. But also Michael Damien. But also. Yeah. Um, but, they, but most of them knew I had a crush on them. So that's, oh, yeah. they, that would have to be a surprise. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, you had the lineup, Philip Chancellor, yep. right to Scott Granger, who wound up being your brother. That was the most depressing time for me. Danny, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? With those yeah. twinkly blue eyes? But you know what's so funny is it was cast so brilliantly because you kind of did look like him. But anyway, Danny Rolotti. And then, of course, Doug Davidson, the most dreamy collection of men on the planet. It's pretty so. great. It's pretty great. I have to say, I have not had like a dud. <laughs> yeah, you're very, it's so good. I would but crush I on all that. of them. I mean, I think they all know that I didn't, I wasn't like bummed going to work. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Question number six, what movie or TV character do you, I know, right? I'm just going to stop doing it. Do you, <laughs> do you, what movie or TV character do you most uh, identify with when you see I them on TV. Be, I wanted to be Elaine on Seinfeld my entire life. And I know people <laughs> would, but that's so crazy. I'm like ready to push everybody. And I watch every day and I just think, oh, it's just such a great part. Um, and like, that's my normal personality to just sort of, I don't know, be around that kind of energy and that kind of group of people. Um, that just aren't serious. So, yeah. um, I mean, I'm very serious when I need to be. And there are some people that only know me as serious, which I find it funny because if I have to go into a work meeting where I'm uh, serious, I think, oh my God, they must think I am so boring. And I don't really, mm -hmm. you know, like I'm trying to just prove a point, but they don't mm -hmm. know that I have a wild side. <laughs> I, I hear you. In my day job, I'm a producer and a general manager. Mm hmm so the voice lowers. I don't laugh as much. I use a lot of statistics and metrics. And then I leave there. And my bosses have actually said to me over the years, you know, if you were just a little more gym, they would like you better. But it's hard because you're focused so much on like the business aspect of it. So I hear it, you know. Oh my God. You do a lot of business with your husband, right? A lot of producing and such from so what I read. Yeah, we, I mean, we did all three of our web series together, which was, which was mm -hmm. fun. He has this awesome production space in Culver City called Three Labs. So it's like this 30 foot, 30 foot, 30,000 foot um, event space. So he has anything from like Tesla come in or a great charity event or um, it's, it's a constant turnaround. So I hope one day to call it Desilu and to shoot something that we do mm -hmm. in there. But, yeah. you know, it's, it's first come first serve yeah i was actually i know exactly where that is i, I live near the mall in okay Kobe city which has so. gotten so cool yeah well that whole area Oof, yeah like, i know it's like booming i know it's like yeah. even in the couple of years i've been on the west side here it's like a whole different place already you know yeah. Yeah. uh but when i found out that was your space i was like that's awesome i yeah. love it that's well that really was great. His, and it, it, it's been such a it's been such a great um yeah experience so We'll see what happens. Right now, of course, you know, it's hard to get, have get together. So it's cool. It's a little quiet. Yeah. But life is going to pick up and everything's going to be good again. Mm -hmm. So speaking of get togethers, if you were yeah. planning a dinner out. What a segue. <laughs> wait, I know, right? Well, I, I know the question. So <laughs> like, say you were planning a dinner out and you are going to go out with your girls. Where would you go? What's the perfect dinner out? Specifically, what's your favorite food? Oh. At the dinner out. I mean, it's so hard. I, re I really love Italian, but like so, so often it's mm -hmm. just fun to go out for margaritas and like chips and that kind of thing. So I don't, I really, I mean, I like a, my husband and I even too, if we go to a restaurant and there are seats at the bar, we will sit, we're counter people. So, mm -hmm. um, 
So more, much more casual probably than anyone would think. So I know I'm being very vague. I know you want specific places, don't you? No, you do. I know you do. Oh my God. I want to ask questions like this. Like, don't you ever like have a dream in the middle of the night that you forgot? Is this question number seven or is that question number nine? <laughs> like, do you have a panic about that? No, I mean, I, I have it all in front of me right now. Oh. The reason I keep, the reason I'm not focused completely on you is because it's all over here. Okay. Yeah, I, mean, I love I love to eat. I love to go. I love to go out. Yeah. Um, but I'm I've been very content staying in. Um, yeah, I mean I, I go with the flow. <laughs> so I've had I mean here in LA the Mexican is incredible. Mm -hmm. So I agree with you. Like chips, I mean, guac, okay. salsa. Like holy I love crap. going to Merrix. So Tex Mex. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, we, yeah. So what we used to do at YNR, we have an hour. In the, in the olden days, this was like in the 80s, early 90s, we would have literally an hour. We would hop in the car, race over to Merrick's, have fajitas, have a pitcher of margaritas, get back in the car, whew, and like get back onto set and be like, and slap on some powder. And we would, know, <laughs> we would know our dialogue well enough. And we had cue cards back then, but you still had to know it. And, and we, mm -hmm. would, we would make that scene happen, <laughs> probably even better. My gosh, um, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> after a kick ass, a picture of kick ass. But there's some really good places on, on thir like West Third Street now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, all over. Uh, why in our tapes at the CBS lot or no? Right by the Grove. Yeah. Yep. Oh, so right next so, to the Grove. Yeah, Talk so about the, food so options. The Grove, when they were like, there's this mall that's going to come, we're like, mall mall because we really had no options and suddenly yeah. we walked over there and we we're like we could come here every day and there's <laughs> fountains and uh, no and i was like oh my gosh you could shop and it was i i called it the greatest place on instead of disney i guess disneyland i called it the greatest place on earth for years because we just had an option not that the yeah. commissary isn't fine dining because it <laughs> hilarious so it's funny. lunch it's lunch at its best <laughs> oh that's funny so um say you're having a boozy lunch you know okay. having mexican with the girls yep. what um what might happen that would land you on the cover of a tabloid magazine like why would we see your name on the inquirer hmm hmm well i feel like maybe i would I would bet someone to maybe do something, but like, I wouldn't do it. I'm happily married with kids that would crucify me if I were suddenly do like, even if they popped into this, I'll get like, well, that was, you were weird, you know, like, so if you have kids and if you have teens in your life, you're constantly mm -hmm. being monitored. Mm -hmm. So, but if I had, if I had, you know, I mean, my girlfriend and I, before we were married, we went to, we were in Mexico and we were having the whistle blown and the tequila poured in my, my mouth. And um, I would not leave the rest. I said, I'm not leaving the restaurant until I make out with somebody. And she's like, no, 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 we're going, we're going. I was like, no, we're not. So, you know, but I was, I was in my probably just legal, just like a day after being legal. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I would, I, I wouldn't get into a fight. Um, I wouldn't undress, but I would probably. I mean, maybe I don't know. Maybe we would be loud, and then someone would say, you know, tone it down, and then I'd sit up a little taller and say, Yeah, you yeah. tone it down, and then, and then well, they didn't know that I did Walker Texas Ranger, and I could kick their asses. <laughs> yeah. I, I learned that today. I love that. It was that. Chuck um, Norris's niece. And boy, the training that I had to do, I will never forget. So what, don't like mess with full me. combat yeah. training? Like well, fight training? I mean, amazing stunt coordinators. Like that to me was a great experience. Like, you know, not that YNR is fantastic, but you're in a, you're in a room. Um, I mean, you're, you know, you're in a set, which you love and you're very comfortable in. But to run down the street and then have to, you know, meet your guy and like you have the whole thing choreographed mm -hmm. out and then you know i mean it's great it was so fun um and so yeah i love it i love it um so maybe when you're out having margaritas and chips yeah you drop a curse word every now and then what's your favorite curse word um gosh it changes so much because you know for a while it was constant, but then I said, um, I mean, what was my favorite curse word? Um, I mean, 
maybe like right now I would say like he's such an asshole like or that person's mm. such an asshole but you know I think I like the F word you want me to say it don't you yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> and then it will just go on like replay fuck 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 fuck, fuck. right um yeah I don't I mean fuck you is fine I, I mean I don't yeah. know. I, I like them all. I was around Jeannie Cooper, who played Catherine Chancellor for, mm -hmm. in my wee days. She taught me every word, um, <laughs> which was great. And Michelle, too. Was like, you know, if you want yeah. to flush the toilet, she is the queen of the potty mouth. So, um, yeah, I mean, we say them all. It, it's, it, it's, I'm sure when people come to set, they're a little disappointed in us. <laughs> no, my gosh, no. You I mean, I love that. <clears throat> you have to keep it colorful or yes. else right. it, the rest of it gets boring, you know? Right. So, yes. and I'm sure of all people, Jeannie understood that the best, you know? So what else did Jeannie teach you back in the day? I'm sure it was a master um, class every day. It was. I mean, she, she would, you know, she knew that I had a lot to learn. So she would push, she would push me and I would be afraid. Um, but in the end, like, she'd be like, that's what I was looking for. You know, like I had to mm -hmm. get when you're young and you are unsure and not really confident, you have to, you have that moment where you like your hands are at your sides and you don't know what to do. And then one day you go like that on camera and you're like, Oh my gosh, there, I can, I can move. And as soon as you can get to that point, um, it's so freeing. So mm -hmm. she would constantly every day, try and try and get me to just get, get there. Cause once you get there, there's no going back. Yeah. Um, so she was she in every way. I mean, I did a, a Corbin Burns and her son had uh, called and, and Jeannie. Actually, it was Jeannie who called me and asked if I would be part of a movie that they did that Corbin directed called Carpool Guy. Um, so I got to work with Jeannie on like on a different level there. I mean, she's just she, she was so um, she was so the mother of the show and in such a friend friendly way like she would be she would tell everyone to shut up and we'd all listen like at a moment's notice but she was also just you know one of the kids so um mm. she's truly missed but we have large life-size cut up cut, cutouts of her and we all get excited if we're in her dressing room so she's still very much with us i know i can only imagine has somebody stepped up to be the new mom on the show mother on the show or have y'all <laughs> just kind of We've all aged. We've all we've all aged up. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, like Eric for sure is he. If he tells everyone to stop talking, we all do. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, well, there's just so much respect. I mean, I think this is really hard for us because we just we really love each other. So to not be together is very difficult. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I mean, you know, M Melody. I guess I, you know, I would just say like maybe Mel and Eric sort of. Have have, I don't know, I don't want to I don't want to take something away from someone else because there's so there's so many leaders there. Peter, you yeah. know, like, so many leaders. Um, sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so speaking of you stepping up and delivering some performances, last week was a, um, if you will, full week of Paul and Kristen <laughs> romance. So I was like, hoping everyone would make, make it to Friday because Friday. So I have forgotten filming some of these. So it was exciting for me as well until we were broken in by the daily virus update would be a little bit hard because I'm like, I don't remember what happens. I don't remember that that Mary gave me a toaster at the lingerie shower. <laughs> I couldn't even remember who was at the shower. So I was yeah. so excited. It was such an awesome group of women. I was like, yay, Chris had friends. Um, I just thought, I was like, well, Nina must be there. And then after that, I was like, I don't know who else would come. And I was so happy. It was, was like... It was all stars, though. All, like, yes. when Lon showed up to oh your God. shower, I was yes. like, oh, And I love that, like, Drew and Nina were, like, yeah. over in the corner doing their thing. Like, yeah. it was great. And yeah. I love, like, when a whole bunch of women, like, if only we were more boozy, right? Like, yeah. that, I love scenes where it's, like, that kind of group, that mm -hmm. element. Like, Well, I got to tell you, it took me so. right back to, like, feeling for you because I was like, why is Mary Williams always treating Cricket like she's the town hussy? Yeah, like, like, who did she like? She didn't like Lauren. So, like, what? what's the problem with me? Because yeah. I was, I mean, I would be the nicer of the two. But she liked Lynn, which I totally get. Like, oh, well, yeah. this is what I was going to ask you. I mean, poor Lynn. First of all, oh. she clearly was, like, long-suffering <laughs> Lynn. She had a crush on him. He had eyes I have. I would have let those two get together if they wanted. <laughs> <laughs> 
Paul just never asked. He never asked. That's in another, that's a parallel universe on, in Genoa City. Like, Cricket's like, listen, you can have one night with Lynn. Yeah, get, get a free pass. Malcolm will come back to the show for, and you go with Lynn. She's so sweet. I love, I love the actor that plays Lynn too. Because she's amazing. Because she, she can just tell how kind she is in real life. And she she's is. just always like, mm, I know. They should have, you know what? That would have been so great for them to have. Like right before our wedding, he's mm -hmm. like, he had his bachelor party and yeah. they got together. That would have been so good. Well, hey. I mean, clearly he would have thought that he was going home to Christine, right? But then somehow it was Lynn, like, you know, there was a mix up or something. Right, you know? dude, or she passes out in my bed and then I go to, because Nina needs me and then he crawls into bed and yeah. it was the best sex of his life. And then he wakes up <laughs> so bummed that it's not going to be his wife to be. The other thing, and I have to give it to my mom. My mom is uh, 73. She's had a stroke. She, 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 after the stroke, when she started to come back, she would say things to my, me like, what did I miss? Oh. Like, what's going on? Like, she, you know. So the, our big question is, where the hell is chemo? Like, we talk about chemo all the time. Like, I know. I saw Lon at your shower, and I was like, oh, my God. Hashtag, where's chemo? That's I my know. new favorite hashtag. <laughs> I like that hashtag. Yeah. Chemo. <laughs> hashtag we need chemo. We yeah. Need to go back. Yeah. Um, so wait, I have a question though. Um, uh, did you see Fridays? So Fridays when Eva Longoria pulls me out, like when she's yeah. The, okay, yeah. yeah. And then, and he then, slugs her. Oh my <laughs> god. So we actually talked about that. We were like, you know, we're so shocked that in this day. I mean, it was but not good yeah. back then. But I mean, he. <laughs> Wow. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And then yeah. I love that little because Matt told me about it, but I didn't remember that they had that sweet little kind of flash of, of the whole our whole lives before. Mm -hmm. And then when he came back and just the cuddle, like sometimes it just needs to just be no words, just just the action. Mm -hmm. So interesting. Yeah. yeah. It was a great episode. And it was such a great episode with Drusilla and, and Nikki. I mean, it was so good. Oh my God, I had forgotten when Drew worked at Jabot, how she oh. would like just volley one-liners back and forth oh, with so Mel. Good. So good. Oh, it's I, so good. I loved the name Brash and Sassy because everyone would, when we would say it, we'd be like Brash and Shashi. Like everyone would go up on their lines because we would all like, we couldn't say it, Brash and Shashi. But oh, I loved those days. I love those days. The other thing from those days is, remember when Ashley was a serious chemist? Like yes. actually making <gasps> lipstick in a lab, you Put know? glasses on and then Frank Bernard, who, that was his real, his real name. Um, he was the French actor, he was so great. Mm -hmm. I'm blanking. So Canada saw that episode too, right? Canada saw that episode Friday. Um, it was just, I, I was so happy and I was so happy we saw it all the way through because yeah, um, yeah. That, that was, that was like classic YNR and it's like everybody's like you, every scene that you cut to, every group had like some real big deal going on. So it was like, you, whatever you switched to next, it was like, oh good, I'm back to that. Oh good, I'm back yeah. to that. Yeah. 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 They were my, I mean, those were just like my favorite, favorite days because that's also when I was like. I mean, that must have been late 90s, right? When all that so. happened. Yeah. yeah, so I was in college. I was glued, you know, I- Do you I miss class? You didn't miss a class for YNR, did you? I mean, don't you worry <laughs> about my college, okay, <laughs> really? I, <laughs> I feel no, like you I switched your it. schedule. Oh, you tape it. Oh, they yeah, had to- I was a they, teenager, yeah. so I didn't come I, home until 10, 30, 11 at night, and I would watch it at 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. yeah, probably really good at 11.30 at night. Oh, and it, you know, I lived with my mom and she would put a post-it on the VHS tape. Of course she did. Of like, what happened that day if it was really juicy, you know, oh. so. And then some days he'd be like, mm, crumple up the post-it, eh, don't need to see that one. Yeah. <laughs> no, never, never, never. I would love to see your mom's highlight page. Like, like you know, so-and-so kissed so-and-so. Jack said mm -hmm. no to Victor, you know, like I want to know in detail <clears throat> what she said. My mom is still mad at Jill about some things. So um, I'll tell you this quickly. Oh, so Matt, our, our, our mutual friend, Maddie, he so sweet. When my mom had the stroke, she was kind of learning how to do things again. And she's in a wheelchair. Getting to the bathroom was tough because she had to angle her wheelchair just the right way. 
And in order to do that, we put pictures on the wall. Maddie got her um, signed picture of Mel and a signed picture of Jess Walton. So they're, they're right there. Yep. And when she gets to Nikki, she knows that she has to turn her wheelchair 90 and roll directly in the bathroom. That's and she said awesome. to me when she goes, and I don't look at Jill. <laughs> 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 it's hilarious. Oh my gosh. Hey, whatever worked, and it sounds like that worked well. Yeah, Aww. yeah. Nikki's her physical therapist, I guess. You know. <laughs> the last question I think is super fun. Um, who did you text <clears throat> last, and what did you say to them? Oh my. Um, who did I text? I may have texted Matt. Um, mm. Let's see. So I text Doug almost every day. Um, we check in about like, you know, what did you think about that show? But I'd have to go back and look. I would probably said to a kid, like, let me know when you're home. Something boring, you know, something boring. But I have good texts, um, especially if I'm texting my husband. Um, but now I have to be careful because when you, f if, when you have multiple young people in your home, they could pick up your phone at any time and they would be mm -hmm. grossed out certain texts. Um, so yeah, I don't, I, I'd have to, I'd have to look. I think I said, I think I told a woman, Nadine, who helps me out. I said, don't text me between you know six after six because I won't answer. Hilarious. <laughs> yeah. So wait, but, have so you good. ever seen this? So I got I so I was cleaning out my parents. Okay. So I had forgotten that this existed, which is so funny because I was I was like, hmm, did did we actually submit cookbooks or recipes or did somebody help us out? So it was interesting. I was going through and it was like Jeannie Cooper's. Uh, a sour cream baked chicken okay and but then i got to it and then there's like themes which is so cool so like i'm just going to show this to you for one second and then we'll get back to some toilet questions um crimson lights <laughs> coffee house so all the things you could drink at crimson lights like like iced mocha and fresh squeezed orange juice but then it was really cool because at Olivia and Malcolm's wedding. It was like what they were serving, which is supposed to, I suppose, be supposed to be like again dishes that we made. But the funniest one is the page that we're on. We're on a number of pages, but we're on comfort foods for <laughs> devastating breakups. And then I was like, oh yeah, I'm curious what that would be. Who would some? And it's like Autumn's golden butternut squash and apple soup. I'm like, if I just broke up and I'm devastated, I'm eating like French fries with like. Yeah. Not like cheese and not um and then the second one was salmon leek and potato soup or pork tenderloin so so god bless anyone who bought Amazing. this great book but it's pretty cool and then on the back is peter and diane but i mean it's just so fun like it's sad to be cleaning out my parents house but at the same time what i'm finding is 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 crazy um like their director's chairs and my dad's like badge to CBS and all of that stuff. So it's fun. I mean, it's sad, but you know, I, yeah. Oh, oh you love the, you. Oh, this Lynn would love this book. I think it's Lynn. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll see if I can find a bunch and then figure out how we can distribute a few. Cleaning out the house is really, really difficult, but yeah. you know, um, my producer and I were talking earlier about you doing that. Cause I saw your posts yeah. and you probably have a mini museum in yeah. that you know like part of me is like don't get rid of anything I you know, know. Like, put it in a unit it's like <laughs> a curator you know oh my gosh that's what lynn should be doing now curating a small <laughs> museum in general <laughs> city um, or like at the next fan event like i could just i could i could decorate I have some real, I mean, just the, so even down in what we called their gym, it was their basement. We had, there was a treadmill down there, so we called it the gym, <laughs> um, which nobody ever used. But um, the, it was every cast photo from like all the years. So it was pretty, pretty cool. Um, yeah. But again, I mean, I can't throw them away, of course. But what am I going to do with 30 or 40 yeah. big cast photos? Yeah. I'm, I'm sure there are a lot of people that would be like, oh, but you, you know. They're too big for our house. I mean, like they're big, like you, yeah. So we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. I'm not worried. I just have to do it quick. <laughs> Soon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, if you need help, I will start a fundraiser. Oh. I'll start oh. a GoFundMe. We will start the, you know, Lee oh, Bell be Museum <laughs> because part of me is like, I mean, part, I totally get it. I cleaned up my mom's house after the stroke. I totally get it, and and it's emotional and it's hard, and you you have to go through every piece but you don't want to and you know i, I right. know what you're going through but but 
Oh, no, it's, so, it's like bittersweet. And they both have, like, to me, if they're together, and, you know, it was a long process, and now, like, if they're together, I'm happy. And now it's just like, yeah. Um, but but it is fun. It is fun to see what I find. Yeah. Are you doing it alone, or are your brothers helping? Uh, I mean, you know, I'm, like, I'm in charge of, like, my mom's clothes and stuff like that. So they're, they're definitely helping. Um, I'm, I'm probably, I don't, Brad and I are probably toe-to-toe -to -toe with, with getting stuff done. Bill, it's, yeah, Bill's doing other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> We're very yeah. close. We're very close. And Bill came over the other day to kind of check out some of the stuff. But, um, you know, it's high. Like, I don't, I don't it's, it's, it's more interesting to me. Um, you know, my mom had a talk show in Chicago and she had uh, like cr crazy awesome guests. So she had interviewed Marilyn Monroe and all the presidents and all that stuff. So I I'll take a few, like, I don't want to be rushed through it. So I'll sit there and, you know, go through it. And so it's all good. <laughs> Um, yeah, your mom, a super accomplished talk show host, 15 Emmy Awards during her run in Chicago, right? Yeah. I yeah. mean, that's Huge what's history. so funny. So growing up, I would, we would, we couldn't, she was like the Oprah of Chicago. So we couldn't go anywhere without someone stopping us. And as a kid, I would be so frustrated because I was like, I just want to go to Benetton and get a sweater. Why can't we do? And she's like, I'm very gracious. And I say hello to everyone. And, and you know, I was like, no, I, I appreciate that. And I tried to learn from that as well. Um, but that's like, she, my mom was the famous one. My, I knew my dad was sitting at a typewriter and typing. I just didn't really, like, I knew what he was doing because I would be obsessed with the show. But I, it, that wasn't, like, our reality. Like, hit, like why in our, our days, uh, you know, being the popular thing in our lives, my mom was kind of the attention getter. So for us to move out here was a big deal because she had to give up everything. So that's mm -hmm. a mom for you. Yeah. That's but amazing. She, yeah. It's Guess amazing. what? We yeah. did it. Yeah, <laughs> it was. So I mean, the great. people love it. The people love it. So, um, and I made it through all of my post-it notes. So that oh was my, pretty good too. <laughs> that's so good. And I'm gonna think about like, there's still one. I would, maybe I, maybe I an didn't answer all, but I'll still think about like what would get me in trouble at a mm -hmm. restaurant. What would get me arrested? <laughs> Watch. Maybe it'll just happen, and then you'll be like. She answered the question. I mean, <laughs> she did this for me. <laughs> yeah, I hope it's not foreshadowing. Like, I'll be oh like, my taken God. away. And I was like, but Jim made me do it. <laughs> yeah, right. It'd be so horrible. My goodness, my goodness. No, I think, I think part of what I love about the, um, because, you know, I've been watching you all on TV and off for so long. I think part of what I love about the Y and R family in particular is that you all seem to pretty, like, like really even killed people. Like, you know, I I spent my twenties oh, no, and thirties in New York a little City. Crazy. <laughs> well, but I mean, I knew some some stars in New York that would do some crazy things. So, and maybe you all did, and we didn't hear about it. But I always felt like, oh no, the Y and R kids—they're good kids, you know. When we when the no? Emmys used to be in New York, and we would when we used to go to New York and and like play with the New York crowd, and we would stay out, and it got a little crazy. But um, yeah, I think I think it just stayed hush hush. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. It was also a different time, right? We didn't have social media twenty years ago, so it was it, a different thing. Definitely, no pictures to yeah. prove it. Yeah. Well, hey. Laura Lee, you're the best. This was so Thank much you. fun. So Thanks much fun. So Congratulations much. on the blog and all the gang. Thank you. Oh, thanks so much. Yeah, it's uh, we're starting a, a formal podcast, if you will, in about three oh, yeah. weeks. Perfect. So right. when that's up and running and we're actually like doing it with mics and the whole thing, I will be in touch with you because I would love to hear more. Like I could talk to you for seven hours. So okay. yeah, that will be super about eight. Great. Yeah, or exact. Well, I just, <laughs> I'll just have you. You'll come over. We'll socially okay. distance. You know what Perfect. I mean. I'll we'll have a kiki brunch yeah, and I've... we'll have a drink. Yeah, it'd be great. All right, doll. Thanks so much, and um, we'll see you around. All right. Mwah. Thank have you. Have a good night. Yeah, bye. Bye.